AIM students, parents, friends, my name is Shai Ginsberg and I teach Israeli and more specifically Hebrew cultures and for the past eight years have also served as the AIM's director of undergraduate studies. This is not the way I imagined this moment. I'm sure you heard these words repeatedly over the past few days and that they also echo your own feeling. We have spent so many hours in person together, in classrooms, offices, hallways and dining halls, talking and conversing about matters of great importance, but also about matters of little consequence. Learning together, yes, we also learn when we teach you, learning together then, thinking about the world around us, trying to understand cultures near and far, those we were familiar with and those that were newly introduced to us and how they relate to each other. Sharing a physical space was elemental to what we were doing, to our very understanding of what it means to approach humans around the globe with their own language, culture, perspective of life. Indeed, it is crucial to the core of our mission as instructors, to share with you, our students, the sense of bafflement, confusion and wonder that drives us in our own pursuit of knowledge. You all are aware, all too well, that what we did was interrupted all of a sudden. The transition to remote learning was not merely a trifle, the exchange of one platform for another. It is not merely the fact that we, your AIMS faculty, miss very much meeting with you in person, that the limited time we interacted over Zoom compensated only little for the much greater time we would have spent with you on campus, that virtual interaction cannot reduplicate real interaction. It is also and mainly the fact that it touched the very heart of what we work so hard to accomplish here at Duke. To understand men, women and children living, working, playing and dreaming in, in different parts of the world means to interact with them at close proximity, immersing ourselves in their lives. It means traversing geographical, mental, emotional distances, not virtually, although that can help prepare the way, but we, ourselves, in our very bodies. Sharing a space is a crucial step in that endeavor. Remote learning forces us to rethink and reevaluate what is important to us. What does it mean to interact with the diversity of human cultures and, la and languages, histories and experiences remotely? And what does it mean to be forced to maintain distance from each other? What does it mean to have to watch the world from afar, restricted, as so many of, our, of us are at the moment, to close quarters. Duke held such values as becoming global citizens and ethical leaders. How have the notions of globe, ethics, leadership changed over the past few weeks? A couple of weeks ago, Jews around the world celebrated Passover. Usually a family and communal celebration, this year the holiday was noted in seclusion. The festive dinner features the ritual reading of the Haggadah, a selection of passages, stories and songs that commemorate the biblical exodus from Egypt. The Haggadah as a whole revolves around asking questions and suggests that without asking questions, one cannot relate the release of the Israelites from bondage. One of the most beloved sections of the Haggadah is a Midrash, a, big, a biblical exegesis on four children, each with a particular fashion of asking questions, the wise, the wicked, the simple, and the one who does not even know how and what to ask. Each asks question, question according to his or her character. The wise inquires about the laws that regulate the life of the community. The wicked challenges their validity, and the simple one asks to be told plainly what he or she needs to know. The moral seems to be that, notwithstanding whether questions are learnt and clever, simple, even simplistic, or testing, even disrespectful, each deserves true, honest, honest, thoughtful answer. It also suggests, however, that the last child, the one who does not even know how and what to ask, poses the most pressing task, the one most crucial. For before we can proceed, we have to teach that child how to ask questions. Only then can we go on and tell the story. I believe that I speak here for, for my colleagues as well. What we endeavor to do in our classes is to raise questions. 
We aim to show that asking questions, easy as it may look, is anything but. Rather, it is difficult and challenging, and we cannot proceed and make progress without asking questions. Moreover, asking questions requires attention and commitment that have to be nurtured. The circumstances in which we have found ourselves makes this, make this charge even more critical. In the face of the global challenges we now find ourselves in, we cannot be complacent and have to keep on raising questions. We, your AIMS faculty, have challenged you to get ready for this moment, in which you yourselves have to take responsibility for the continued endeavor to raise questions and search for answers. And we are proud and excited by how you responded to our call, by all that you have done and accomplished over the past four years. We are particularly proud and delighted that we were part of it. We are confident that you are up to the task because for the past four years you have shown yourself so, avidly exploring languages and cultures not your own, earnestly inquiring about your own relationship to these languages and cultures. We, your teachers, know that that has not always been easy, that it required much effort and self-control. Yet you willingly put yourself to the task and now can reflect on your time and experiences in AIMS with great satisfaction and pride. I said it already, but let me say it once more. We are so proud of all you have accomplished and achieved and we feel privileged to have, uh, to have had you as our students. Congratulations. Arabic. Mabrook. Mabrook. Chinese. Kong Si. Hebrew. Mazal Tov. Hindi. Mubarak Ho. Japanese. Omete to gozaimasu. Korea? Persian? Mobile. Persian. Persian. 